Hey there guys, so today I want to take a look at this Acer Aspire 1 laptop because it is one of the cheapest systems that you can find on the market today. There are two glaring problems with this specific model that I have here though. One is the fact that this is rocking in the Ryzen 3 7320U. Even though the, this has the 7000 series naming on it though, this is not what you would expect to see. This is rocking a 4 core 8 thread CPU based off of Zen 2, but it has a Radeon 610M iGPU, which is the lowest end RDNA GPU that you could get on the market today. It's pretty much the exact same chip that you get as integrated graphics on all AMD desktop processors. So not exactly a powerhouse. And the second glaring problem is the fact that this system only has eight gigabytes of soldered memory. So we do get dual channel, but it's only eight gigabytes. And as you can see here with Windows 11, it is using up most of the system. It's interesting because that means that based off of the hardware configuration that we have in this laptop, it makes it a worse configuration than most older 5000 series mini PCs and laptops. So not exactly a great system, but why do I want to take a look at it? Well, like I said, it is one of the cheapest systems that you could find on the market today. And the fact that it actually has a 1080p IPS display for less than $300, well, it stands somewhere in the market at least. It has at least more relevancy than a lot of the laptops that you see out there. So if you're someone that had their parents buy them this system because it was the cheapest thing they could find or it was the only thing that would fit into your budget, I have found some games that run really, really well on this hardware. So let's take a look at about 10 games that run really well on this and practically anything. So the first game I want to take a look at is Slay the Spire. This game has been around for a little while now. It is a very popular indie game, and if you've never tried it, this is the perfect system for it. It is a very simple 2D indie roguelike game that has a card-based combat system. In general, it is insanely replayable and extremely fun, and it's exactly the type of game that runs really well on a laptop like this or most gaming handhelds. And the best part is you can get this on Game Pass, so if you buy this laptop brand new, you actually get a month of Game Pass Ultimate for free. That's exactly where I'm playing this on. And I'll admit I sat here and played this this for a lot longer than I originally anticipated just because it's been a while since I've played it and oh my god is it so much fun it's pretty much the perfect game to just put on while you're watching a live stream or a YouTube video or a podcast and you kind of just want to kill some time because of the style of gameplay it also doesn't require you to just put 100% of your attention so if you're looking for a game that you can play in between activities this is pretty much it now, one of my favorite genres of games in general is the co-op shooter. And the undisputed king of this genre is still Left 4 Dead 2. And here you can see you're running with the medium graphics settings at a above 60 FPS gaming experience. Now on the laptop here, I was playing with a controller, which was my first time ever doing that. And you'll probably see that I completely end up turning around all the time. And it's because on controller, there is a button that you can press that will just instantly do a 180 turn but in general this classic game runs extremely well on here considering the fact that it's a 3d game and we're running on integrated graphics that only have two cores i was just surprised to see this run so well and what this does do is it gives you access to a huge library of custom content for this game it's been out long enough that there are a crazy amount of modded campaigns, modded characters. You could pretty much just do whatever you want with this game. It really helps that it is just based off of the source engine. So because it's built on that, the modability in this is pretty crazy. And like I said, it's still the undisputed king of this genre. Even with games like Vermintide and Darktide coming out, they still just do not match the level of replayability that Left 4 Dead has. But one title that I don't ever really see get mentioned in this genre is Killing Floor. And I do mean the original Killing Floor, not Killing Floor 2, which is at this point also a relatively old game and we have the third one coming out soon. But Killing Floor 2 really built up on a lot of what Killing Floor 1 here originally had. So if you've never played this title, it actually runs really well on a lot of systems because it's built on the Unreal 2 engine. Even when this came out, Unreal 2 was already relatively old. So it was a weird move for them to go with it. But as a consequence, 
consequence of that, it runs really well on extremely low-end hardware. And this is great because of the fact that you can play with this with your friends. So if you're on a cheap system like this, you and your friends could pick up copies of this specific game for extremely cheap and all of you guys can have a great time. You could certainly try to play Killing Floor 2 if you want on here, but just know you're gonna make a lot of compromises in terms of your resolution. And you don't really need to do that here. This is running at full 1080p. We even have the graphics set to high, which is what it defaulted to. And as you can see by the performance numbers, there was really no need to change it. Sure, the game doesn't look great, but the fact that we're playing a 3D co-op shooter on here this well, well, there's something to be said about that. Of course, it's not all old games that will run on this system. There are some modern indie games that you can play on here, though keep in mind that there are some compromises that are made. Here you can see Hades 2 running as I do a horrible job in this boss battle, but just know that you are going to take a bit of an impact in the 1% lows, but in the time that I played this, I really didn't think that it affected the performance enough. The biggest issues with the 1% lows tend to happen when you load into an area, so all of that you don't even really feel during the gameplay. As you can tell by the frame time charts, they're very smooth and consistent, so in general you are going to have a decent time. If you're noticing a pattern though, 2D indie games are where it's at for this system. Here you can see with Bro Force, the level of performance we're getting is pretty much incredible. The only times anything ever happens to the 1% lows is when there are major explosions, which to be fair, there are a lot of those in the game, but it won't really affect your gameplay. And it's usually just when you're loading into new areas. The missions here tend to be pretty quick. It's one of those games where you could just jump in and play it extremely quickly and just hop out as soon as whatever game you're downloading is done downloading or whatever it is that you're doing in between is just done. It won't consume all day unless you let it, which I think is a plus. But what's great about titles like this is that you can actually hook up this laptop to a high refresh rate display and you will be able to feel that smoothness in the gameplay. Will it change anything fundamentally? Not really. A game like this is not one where you need that high FPS by any means, but it's just nice to have. And in general, it's an insanely fun game, so I would definitely recommend giving it a try, and this is another one that is available on Game Pass. And another great indie game that you can play on Game Pass is Dead Cells. This is a roguelike game with an incredible art style and really, really great combat mechanics, and it runs beautifully on pretty much any kind of computer. It's great to see that we're getting this kind of performance on a system like this. I do recommend though that if you're playing on a laptop like this and it's not hooked up to the wall or anything, remember to just limit your FPS to 60. That's the refresh rate of the display. Anyway, you don't need all this extra performance. It's essentially just making your system run more intensely than it has to. So if you're running on battery, always cap your FPS on pretty much any game. That way you're not wasting power and I actually ended up finding quite a few gems going through the Game Pass. I was just trying to find a bunch of different games that could play on here. And I saw that they had SteamWorld Dig 2. I've played the original game before, but I never got around to trying the sequel. And I was really pleasantly surprised to see how well it runs. This one itself was locked at 60 FPS. I didn't try to unlock it in any kind of way. I did disable V-Sync, but that didn't really seem to change anything. So I don't know if the game itself is just hard capped at 60 or if it's just locked to the refresh rate of the display it's hooked up to, but it didn't really matter. It just ran really well. And I had a great time playing it on this specific system. You're into that Metroidvania type of exploration exploration game. It's a really, really fun time. And again, it runs beautifully on here. And if you look at the power usage of the system itself, we're actually just not using all that much. Remember, this is an APU. So the GPU power is the power of the entire chip pretty much. So if you're gaming on battery, this won't absolutely murder it instantly, though. Keep in mind that the system doesn't exactly have the best battery life in general. And actually another gem of a game that I ended up finding on Game Pass is Have a Nice Death. This reminded me a lot of Hollow Knight for what I played of it, but the combat was so much fun from the get-go that it was really, really surprising to me. This was another one where when I sat down to play it, I ended up sinking way more time into it than I originally anticipated because I had so much fun with the gameplay. The art style of it is also just so beautiful. I had never heard of this game until I saw it on Game Pass and decided to give it a go, and I'm so glad I did because this is going to be one that I'm probably going to be playing 
pretty much right after this. I really loved the art style and the aesthetic. I just really enjoyed the combat. From the very beginning, it was really enjoyable and I feel like it's only going to get better as the game goes on. And in general, it ran really well on here. It wasn't absolutely perfect. You might see that the 1% lows don't look incredible in the frame time charts will sometimes show spikes here and there. But for the style of game that it is, I didn't really feel like the performance was bad by any means. But it's so insanely fun that I definitely recommend that you check it out. So the next game that I took a look at is one that I had a lot less of a great time with, and that is Celeste. I really love looking at people play this game. It's extremely, extremely hype to see, but I'm just not built for these kinds of games. I was having a tough time even getting past this early section. The game itself performs fine enough. You'll look at the frame time charts and they'll look a little disastrous, but it's mostly because the game itself has has what seems to be a 60 FPS cap. Not really a problem considering the refresh rate of the display. And those 1% lows are really only dipping down when I die and load in. What that effectively means is that during the actual gameplay, the performance is perfectly fine. As you can see though, I'm just terrible at this game. So if you're not terrible at that, you could get away with playing it. And I did want to try to find another 3D game that ran well on here, since a lot of these were just 2D indie games. Though that's essentially what this APU is really good at. But I did find this game called Lonely Mountain Downhill. And it's a really simple premise of a game. You're going down a mountainous region on a bike. And the gameplay is surprisingly fun. You can definitely pick up some speed on here and it can get kind of crazy to control things. It's one of those games where it's not very punishing to the point where you feel like it's being unfair. It just has some challenge to it and getting a perfect run is extremely satisfying. It's not an incredible experience on here. It's not running at 60 FPS, but if you look at the frame times and the FPS, they're consistent enough that you can get away with playing this style of game on here perfectly fine. And I actually did have a great time with it. It's another one of those games that you can just jump into and get to playing really quickly. And it has the kind of gameplay loop that is extremely satisfying once you really start to nail it. I haven't gotten to any levels where I I found it to be just grossly unfair. It really just comes down to getting the timings of everything right. And when you are having a good run, it is satisfying enough that I think that it is going to probably keep you coming back for more and more, especially if you're the type of person that really likes to find sneaky little cheesy ways of doing missions in games. It can be really rewarding once you kind of figure out your own little shortcuts that work really well for you in certain areas. It's honestly really great. Great. And just like that, that's 10 games that do actually run on the Ryzen 3 7320U and specifically on the RDNA 2 based 610 mi gpu so if you have this kind of integrated graphics even on your desktop computer you can actually get away with playing these games on it that's really impressive to see sure some of these titles are old enough that they probably belong in a museum but we are talking about a system that has an extremely cut down igpu it's honestly unfortunate because if we doubled the amount of cores that are on this igpu it would open up a much larger world of games to it but it really seems like AMD has kind of abandoned the Ryzen 3 when it comes to having any modern relevancy. And even then, that's a bit of an exaggeration as we saw that a game like Hades does run well on here, and that's a brand new title. But you are relegated to mostly just low-end emulation and modern 2D titles if you want to keep gaming on a system like this. But of course, it, it is what you have right now. It was all that was in your budget. There are games out there that you can play. And you do get that free month of Game Pass so you can see if it's even worth it for you. Definitely give some of these games a go. I will leave a link to all of them down below. So if you're interested in picking them up, you can also directly support the channel that way. I'll catch you guys in the next one.